Tiny Tina's Wonderlands is a standalone Borderlands game building off role-playing themes from the very excellent Borderlands 2 DLC, Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep. Once again, Tina is the Bunker Master and has players running through a Bunkers and Badasses campaign, a tabletop role-playing game that the Crimson Raiders like to play when they're not out fighting bandits. Wonderlands leans even more heavily into D&D themes than Dragon Keep, and there's a bunch of changes from Dragon Keep and the Borderlands series as a whole. So here's everything you need to know. Wonderlands has a story beyond just loot and guns, although there's going to be plenty of that. The game takes place well before Borderlands 3, which is set seven years later when Tiny Tina is around 20 years old. That means Wonderlands takes place with a younger version of Tina. As part of a group of space travelers, you crash on Pandora, and Tina's willing to take you in and give you shelter as long as you agree to play bunkers and badasses with her. Quite literally, inside one of her bunkers. Inside Tina's campaign, you'll take on the role of the Fate Maker and fight the evil Dragon Lord, a powerful necromancer who has, check your notes, failed to get rid of heroes in the world because Queen Butt Stallion and the party of heroes keep stopping him. And Butt Stallion is apparently a binocorn, meaning it has two horns and rules a capital city bright hoof. Maybe it's better if we don't go too deep into the whole plot thing. Similar to Dragon's Keep though, you can expect Tina to change up scenarios as you go. Playing alongside you, also from the crashed spaceship, are prepare for backstory, Valentine, who sees himself as a dashing rogue, and others see as a washed up low rent space pirate, and Fret, an office accounting bot turned ship navigator. You'll also see a lot of familiar faces from Borderlands 2, like Torg, now a half bard, that makes a lot of sense, and we spotted Brick in a trailer. Though it's a spin-off, Wonderlands still plays very similar to Borderlands games. It departs from the series in both small and significant ways. The biggest changes are in character creation and class customization. If we look at cosmetics, for example, you don't play as a pre-existing vault hunter. Instead, you fully customize a character, both in terms of what they look like and which class they start as. Your character's look can be typical or extreme. The game has a slider overdrive option that gets rid of limitations and lets you do things like build asymmetrical faces and exaggerated features. You'll also be able to pick a personality which changes things your character says. Those are gallant, clever, gruff, or strange. Each comes with two voice options, and you can even mess with the voice pitch to make yourself a chipmunk or something. Like tabletop role-playing games, you'll dump points into stats for strength, dexterity, intelligence, wisdom, constitution, and attunement. These impact things like critical damage, spell cooldown rates, maximum health, and other combat-related performance. Finally, you'll be able to pick a backstory, because everybody needs a good backstory. Now let's talk about classes. Even though you aren't playing a pre-made Vault Hunter, Wonderlands does still limit you to a starting class before giving you the option later on to multi-class, being picking another class to get into as well. The six classes are the Berserker, who specializes in freezing and smashing things. They can also do a spin attack with their axe. Clawbringer, who focuses on fire and lightning and has a big hammer, and a wyvern companion. They pretty much throw hammers, ground pound, and give their team elemental buffs. The Greatborn focuses on sacrificing health for area damage attacks and has a Demulich companion following them around. They're the typical glass cannon type. The spell shot is a gun wizard, which is awesome, and do wields magic or turns enemies into skeep, which are like alien sheep. The Spore Warden is your typical archer, shooting barrages of arrows and summoning three frost cyclones. The Stabomancer can either toss out a spinning ghost sword or go invisible and do critical damage. They're probably the one most similar to Flak from Borderlands 3. Going further, each of these classes has a class feat, an action skill, and a passive skill. For example, the Graveborn's class feat is Demulich Companion, their action skill lets them sacrifice health to create a dark magic blast, and their passive can be leveled to enhance their companions. Later in the game, players can multi-class, allowing them to unlock and level traits from other starting characters. You'll be able to do things like take both the Clawbringer and Spore Warden's pets at the same time. Multi-classing should open up some very powerful and specific builds. Guns and attacks are also going to be different in Wonderlands. If you play Borderlands, you'll quickly notice that many of the combat mechanics in Wonderlands work the same, currently just operating under different names. Shields have been turned into wards, magic spells have replaced grenades, rings and amulets boost stats in the same way as class mods from Borderlands 3, although more can be equipped now. That's not to say it's just cosmetic differences. Spells, for example, come in a variety of manufacturers and vary quite a lot in how they behave, from meteor strikes to local area damage attacks, and in some cases rapid fire. 
One cool detail is that spells have different hand sigils and flourishes when they're cast. Wonderlands does place a much bigger emphasis on newly added melee weapons, which can stagger enemies and include a small leaping attack if you're going to swing and just miss. Combat emphasizes using gun spells and melee together for maximum effect. You can expect Borderlands' usual gun loot rarity pool, and in the demo we played, we unlocked a wave shooting shotgun and a high rate of fire ice spitting SMG. Elements seem mostly the same with fire, frost, lightning, poison, and the added dark magic that steals health. It seems to be replacing slag and explosive from previous games. Like in other games, each element has a specific use, such as poison burning through armor more quickly and frost slowing and freezing enemies. The other big change is the overworld. The game zones are linked together by a tabletop inspired overworld where you walk around as cute little figurines in third person and navigate imposing obstacles like Cheetos and soda cans. Talking to NPCs in the overworld can lead to entire new zones, which once entered become a little bit smaller than first person shooter areas you're familiar with from Borderlands 2 and 3. There'll be random encounters that you can run away from or take on for extra loot or just to grind levels. There is an end game in Wonderlands and it's a dungeon called the Chaos Chamber. The Chaos Chamber has randomized challenges that take 20 to 30 minutes to complete and involve both mini bosses and larger boss fights. Players are limited to three lives, but can keep anything they pick up during that run, even if they die. There are over 60 level layouts, and between areas, players can choose one of two portals that gives them some degree of control over what they do next. One of the larger rewards if you beat the Chaos Chamber is the ability to reroll enchantments on your gear, allowing you to min-max your builds. As far as we know, Wonderlands, like all other Borderlands games, doesn't have PvP, but it does have co-op and as usual, enemy scale and difficulty to party size. And fantastic news, Wonderlands will launch with crossplay and PlayStation is finally on board. This information came first from a tweet by Randy Pitchford and was followed up in a blog post. As before, you'll do this through shift matchmaking. Pitchford also followed up that he considered full crossplay in Borderlands 3 to be inevitable. That's pretty rad. The game has two player split screen on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, as well as four player split screen on PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S. Like in Borderlands 3, players can pick cooperation or coopetition modes. With cooperation, each player sees their own loot on the ground and gear scales to the level of each individual player. This is great for when high level players want to team up with lower level friends. Coopetition, on the other hand, drops the same loot for everybody and the party needs to divvy up who gets what or fight over it. Depends on how much you like your friends. Enemies scale to the level of the host player, which can make life pretty difficult for anybody below level. Wonderlands has a season pass that kicks off on April 21st and involves four content drops over time. The season pass also includes the cosmetic Butt Stallion pack. The PS5 and Xbox Series X and S versions get the Dragon Lord pack, and players who pre-order get access to the Golden Hero Armor pack. Again, all of these are cosmetic stuff. The four DLCs are accessed through Vesper's Mystical Mirrors of Mystery, which warp players to new dungeons and boss encounters. Each DLC will have a final boss, and each following week, a more powerful version of that boss will appear for players to fight. Beating each boss will also unlock more backstory told by Vesper, and a currency called Lost Souls that can be spent on Vesper's Wheel of Fate. Any bosses defeated in the DLC are also added to the endgame activity, the Chaos Chamber. Later on, the fourth content drop will add a seventh class to the original six in the game. There are a few notable voice actors in Wonderlands. The very talented Ashley Birch, fresh from her star turn as Aloy in Horizon Forbidden West, returns to voice Tiny Tina. She's joined by Brooklyn Nine-Nine's Andy Samberg, Arrested Development's Will Arnett, and comedian and actor and writer Wanda Sykes. You should be aware that only the next level edition, costing 70 US dollars, and the chaotic great editions, costing 90 US dollars, will come with new gen optimizations for PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series S and X. The standard edition at 60 US dollars is rated for PC on the Epic Game Store, Xbox One, and PS4. Wonderlands is set for release on March 25th with season one in April. Tiny Tina's Wonderlands is shaping up to be another twisted adventure through the imagination of an explosively inclined tween's mind. If you want to know more, head on over to GameSpot's YouTube page to check out our hands-on impressions of one of the side areas in the game. It involves a goblin's worker revolt, and we also have 18 minutes of straight gameplay involving Claptrap, if you're into that kind of thing. For more videos about Wonderlands, including our upcoming review and which class is right for you, go ahead and stick to GameSpot. <laughs>